Hi, this is Peter. Welcome to another episode of Beyond Cane Pole. Um, we'll call this one a fishing talk. Um, <laughs> I'm going to laughingly say gear review, history lesson, whatever you want to call it. Um, there's an old saying that everything old is new again. Tinkar anglers are going to probably get up in arms about this. But Tinkara is basically using a cane pole with a fly tied on a hook to catch a fish. Um, that's been around for thousands of years. Um, it's nothing new. Now, Tinkara as we know it today is a refined method of doing this and to be honest with you, comparing Tinkara to a cane pole or Tinkara to a crappy pole is ludicrous because they're not the same thing. The actions are not the same, they cannot perform the same, they don't do the same. I've tried, I've tried both with a cane pole and with a Tinkara rod. Now, I have used cane poles or you know extendable rim poles and flies back when I was a kid to catch fish, you know, especially bedding brim. It's not a new concept, it's just a new way of doing it, at least here in the U.S. As I understand it, in Japan, it's been, been around for a lot longer. I'm not going into all that. I'm not, not a history buff, I'm a fisherman. Okay. There has been a recent resurgence, and I say resurgence, in hand lining. Um, part of it has to do with the survivalists and them making their pocket fishing kits out of PVC. Part of it has to do with the resurgence in the Cuban yo-yo, which is basically a spool to which you, you know, spool, you know, attach line and throw out, you know, hold your line when you throw out your rig. Um, this is nothing new. People have been, you know, human beings have been using a stick, um, carving a spool, um, spindle whatever out of wood and doing this for once again thousands of years um, as long as people have been fishing for subsistence that's the key word there have been a way to hold your line um, and a way to deliver your line pretty much by hand uh, in, in other countries Cuba being one of them which is why they call this a Cuban yo-yo they tend to use these methods to provide food for the table. Um, it's nothing more than a simple, plain, cheap method of gathering fish. Uh, in Cuba and other places, they don't always use the, the manufactured reel. They will use a um, can, a bottle, uh, even a stick. This brings me to the fact that nothing, n nothing old, nothing new is not old already. Um, back when I was a kid, we used to do some hand lining. Basically, we'd get some line, we'd get a hook, we'd get some weight, and we'd spool it up on a Coke bottle. Yes, this is a miniature Coke bottle. My wife got the Coke for a dollar when I picked up a Pepsi at a gas station. And there is a bass zipping after something right behind y'all. Um, sorry about that. I just saw him and got distracted. I bat did some bass fishing yesterday. At any rate, Coke bottle. There's this, you know, where, where it kind of comes in. I've spooled on 100 yards of 12 pound line. I've added two fairly heavy split shot and a large bobber so y'all can see what's going on. Normally, and, and in the past when I was a kid, we'd use this with just the weight spark plug. We use a spark plug for a weight and a hook. We'd catch brim and catfish depending on the size of the hook and, and, and creeks and stuff. You don't have to go out there and buy yourself a Cuban yo-yo. Go to any convenience store that has these little glass bottle Cokes, spend your dollar, drink your Coke, spool your line up. Now admittedly, the Cuban yo-yo has a little advantage to it. Um, there is a company out that I've looked at that has a great advantage to it. I like the way that they have you know, finger holes to hold it and, you know, the way it slopes off, it, it looks good and I've seen people use it. Um, a couple other YouTubers actually have some. One hasn't had a chance to use his yet. The other one's used his quite a bit. I'm not just knocking that. I'm not disparaging that. That will work. It's not what I want to do. 
Um, that particular company, I've, I've read their website, and they make negatives about using a rod and reel. The mechanical advantage and um, gear ratios and all. I made a comment how, you know, it's nothing, um, it's not any better than using a pole, and in fact, it could be a little worse, put you at a little bit of a disadvantage, which it's not a bad thing to be at a disadvantage if that's what you want and that's what you know you're going to be at. Um, disadvantage when fishing is sometimes, you know, fun. A pole. And I'm not talking rod and reel because then you get into gear ratios and sometimes having a fast gear ratio can be a disadvantage when battling a strong fish, but you know, you have to have that fast gear ratio to move your lures. Um, a pole gives you the advantage of having a lever and a lever is one of man's oldest tools. And it's been around for thousands of years, pretty much unchanged. A pry bar, for example, is a lever. And the reason why is it works. These worms are kind of small, but that'll work. Anyway, I'm not here to talk about the advantage or disadvantages of mechanical advantage. You know me. I'm going to use a pole. I also use rods and reels. I'm not changing that for anything. I'm just showing y'all this simple hand lining method. There we go. Like I said, I'm a little rusty at this. There you go. It cast out there. It's out there in the water. We all know a bobber and a worm will catch fish. I'll do that again. Because I fumbled so much. I may cut the fumble out, I may not. reeling motion basically I'm um, coiling up line on the coke bottle spool whatever you want to call it and it's a one-to-one -one, one wrap one wrap one wrap or one motion um, it gives you absolutely no advantage trying to bring in a lure and if you actually try and work lures with this you will tire yourself out it's just what happens um, they say oh you can work lures with it you're jigging a lure yes um, commercial fishermen in poorer countries generally use this as well it, it's effective um, it's just not the best thing in the world. I will probably take the um, bobber off here in a minute, which will require cutting my cutting my hook off and re-spool, you know, retying and all, and show you how this actually works without having so much from the bobber and all. You know, we all know it's a lot harder to cast with a regular rod with a bob bobber, you know, rig. That bass is just going crazy over there. Harry, there it is. Poor man's Cuban yo-yo, hand line fishing, etc. It's out there. I don't know if y'all can see it or not. See it? See it wiggle? Ah, 
Ah, they spooked the goose or the duck that's nesting on infertile eggs. We've got two Peking ducks around here. Don't have a male though. Anyway, I've showed you the poor man's version of a Cuban yo yo. You want to call it that? I don't know that they call it a Cuban yo yo. Except for the books and the bobber. I got two dollars in tax in the whole thing. I got one spool of that. 100 yard Walmart line that costs a dollar, which actually only cost me 25 cents. I'm going with the dollar card. And I've got a dollar Coke bottle. Of course, that wouldn't work, right? It's all tangled spooled. Okay, I'll fix it here in a second. got myself a tangle, which happened on all sorts of things. Yeah, it's going to take me more than a minute to undo that. At any rate, hope you all enjoyed this video. Hope it was a little bit informative. It's not meant to um, disparage anyone using a Cuban yo-yo or to keep you from using a Cuban yo-yo. It's just, if you're interested in it, here's something to try.